Hello everyone. So today I'm going over my cooling fan choice for my 1988 Mustang LX. Uh, I decided to go with a contour dual fan, uh, including the LMR mounting bracket kit and the overflow. The reason I went with this fan is because my previous fan, which was a 9495 SN95, uh, SN95 fan, did not really fit well. It didn't cover the radiator. It fit loosely. It didn't look very good. And this fan's 30 years old, I think. So it's, it kind of doesn't look as nice as this setup does in the engine bay. Uh, it's nice shiny black. Everything in my engine bay is brand new. So I, I kind of figured I wanted to upgrade, at least for appearance. I'm going to go over some of the relays and controllers that I ultimately did not use, as well as what I actually did use here to control this. And then I will run it just to get some amperage readings and show you how it operates. So moving over to the relays, these are some of the choices that I went through when deciding how I'm going to operate this fan. The SN95 fan that's on the floor there was originally operated with a Bosch 75 amp relay, just a simple on off relay to a ground switch. It worked okay, but it always caused power surges when the fan came on and off. So I decided to look into some other options here. So this is a particularly popular option, the Volvo two speed uh, cooling relay. Uh, basically the way it works is you have your power coming in on this single wire and then it outputs on either the red or green depending on which activation wire gets grounded here. These are these will actually close the relay inside. What, pe what most people do is they connect these to BMW dual temp switches. They have two temperatures. They have a low and a high in one sending unit. So depending on the temperature, it'll either trigger this wire or this wire, and it'll close either this contact or this contact. This is kind of an easy way to get two speeds. You do need to use the resistor that is on the contour fan. So one of your wires outputting from that Volvo relay will go into this. It'll, one wire will come out into one side, and then come out, and then you split that into each fan. That's how you get the low speed the high speed we would be directly connected. These other controllers here are PWM controllers that I was going to use. You can find these on all sorts of other makes and models. Um, this particular unit um, is a Bosch unit and this will come on focuses and fusions I believe. You'll either find them with the wires coming out of the end here like this one does or with an actual plug on each end here. And the wiring on this is simple. It's two wires to your fan, positive and negative, and two wires feeding this unit, positive and negative, and then a single PWM control wire. All these control units, if you actually look at it, this one here is off a Hyundai. And it'll be the same thing. Two wires outputting and three wires in. Power, ground, and your PWM control wire. This particular unit is a little bit undersized. You can see here it says 280 watts. So I wouldn't use this for an electric fan. You might want to use this for maybe, I don't know, a fuel pump or maybe a small fan driving, cooling a um, power steering cooler, for instance. This was the controller I was going to go with until I found out this one was actually fried. This is a Volvo S60 unit. Um, it's quite a beefy unit. Uh, it believes the car that this came out of runs a 60 amp fuse to the wires that feed this. And the aftermarket wiring harness actually comes with number 8 wiring with two number 10s outputting. So it's actually um, quite powerful. You could run a lot off this unit. This one's an S60 and the difference between S60 and S80 is that you can see there's two terminals on one side. The other side is blank. So this one, even though it shows excuse me, two outputs, it's really only a single fan controller. The Volvo S80 units, some of them are dual fan, they'll have contacts on both of them. So if you're gonna run one of these, you need to verify they have contacts on both sides. The S60 ones are about 40 bucks, the S80 ones are about 80 bucks. A little bit expensive, which is why I ultimately went with Infinity Q50 or a Mazda 6 fan controller. Um, it's a little bit smaller. Hang on, let me grab the Volvo unit. It's a little bit more compact. 
And this particular controller comes in a vehicle that has a 50 amp fuse feeding this thing. The factory wiring is number 10s feeding into the main control plug. And then I believe these are 12 gauge out to each fan. It's plenty, plenty, plenty good size wiring for what I'm gonna be using here when you see the amperature draw. So how it works is basically this connector here. You have a power, a ground, and your single control wire. This would plug in right here. Now for the sake of this video, I am unplugging one side. I just don't wanna have two fans running, which will make it kind of loud. On this side of things, you have your power, your ground, and that single wire I'm using a small little cheap Amazon PWM controller. Uh, I'm just gonna unplug this. Plug this bad boy in. And then you can see here that the fan controller is powered by the battery. I have it set for 500 hertz, and right now it's at 3% duty cycle. That should keep the fan off. So I'm going to go over here and plug this into clip in. That should be enough. Again, I'm only running one fan here. One is unplugged. So this particular controller operates between 24 and 100% duty cycle. Anything before 24%, the fan should be off. So as we increase the duty cycle, we get up to 24. You should see the fan kick on right there. Now this is minimum speed. Um, if we're to take an amp meter, Zero it out. We're barely pulling one amp here where this is now. Again, one fan. So if you were to double that, you'd be a little bit under two amps. Now we're just going to crank it up. And you can hear the fan respond. And we'll go to max. One fan is drawing about 12.4 amps. So we're going to knock this down. <clears throat> so prior to this video, I did a test where I took one fan and I wired it directly to this relay and I just simply turned it on. Um, you usually get a high motor starting current, and I did the test with one fan only because I didn't want to splice them together. I just wanted to keep it simple. So I wired one fan up to the relay and flipped it on. And using, using this meter, which has an inrush feature, I measured 62 amps on one fan for less than half a second before it settled down to 12 amps. That is quite a big spike if you consider two fans kicking on. It's over 100 amps combined. Uh, these controllers have a soft start speed, uh, feature where if you turn them on, they will not ramp to max right away. They will start at the lowest setting and slowly build. So I will show you that the highest reading you get on this is going to be 24 amps. I've done this with the inrush and you don't get anything. So I'm not gonna do inrush here. I'm just gonna leave it on standard DC amps. I am gonna plug this fan back in. So now both fans are connected. I'm going to come over here, set my meter. And now I'm just going to ramp it up to max speed. Keep an eye on the amps. And that's 100%. Down to zero. 
We will actually go to the lowest position, which is 24% duty cycle. So this is the minimum speed. We're pulling 1.5 amps, 1.6 amps. We have both fans operating here. So this, take this off. Controller can also, you can, you may be able to use a relay here. And I will say that with an asterisk because I'm not sure if that'll kill this controller. Uh, let me explain. If I can get this wire off. So, if you take that PWM control wire that runs from the control controller and ground it out on this particular post, the fan will turn off completely. If you remove that PWM control wire and have it open, the, fan, the, the controller goes into fail-safe mode, which means that it'll, it'll think that it lost connection to the ECU and just default to max. So, if you remove the, that PWM trigger, the fans spool up. They will go to max, and that's the only speed that they will be in. Now, if you take that PWM wire again and ground it, the fan shut down. So you could kind of use a relay, but I do not know how long this controller will last if you do that. Um, so I'm gonna unplug this real quick. Okay, power is off. So this is the controller power number. 21493C370B. This one is off in Mazda 6. Uh, I have another one off an Infinity Q50, but I don't have that one handy. So I, I'll leave the part number in the description. Uh, the If you go on eBay and you type in Infinity Q50 fan controller or Mazda 6 fan controller, You'll find that there are a lot of black body cases here. They're all metal, but the, some of them are painted over black. There was a recall a couple years ago on those controllers for failing. They, they tend to fail open, which means the fan will either go to max or not work at all. So the black box ones you need to stay away from. I know they're dirt cheap. You can probably find them for 15 bucks. Um, but if you pick up one of those, you may want to keep an eye on the fans or carry a scare, spare unit with you. You can buy the new Mazda ones and Infinity ones for under 70 bucks brand new. And those are more robust. You can buy them used. I bought this one for 15 bucks with the plugs. Uh, the aftermarket plugs are a little bit on the undersized size. So the OE ones are probably 10 gauge. These aftermarket ones are maybe 12 gauge. And these are actually 16. Well, I think these are 14. Um, but considering that this whole setup with this controller only drew 24 amps and at 12 amps a fan, that should be okay for what you're going to do. If you're going with a different fan, you may want to go with larger connections. Or you may want to go with this Volvo S80 unit uh, with the dual fan. If you have one fan, you can go with the S60 unit. Uh, just a note, the S60, S80 unit operates a little bit differently. The frequency is 100 megahertz, and it'll operate between 10 and 90 percent pulse width. Uh, sorry, 10 and 90 percent duty cycle. The Infinity Mazda one will operate. Uh, I'm, I'm using 500 megahertz, but I actually believe it'll do 250 megahertz, which is what my mega squirt's going to output. And the duty cycle is 24 to 100 percent on that one. Um, so anyway, that is the setup I plan on running. I am going to, for the moment, I'm going to run, I'm going to wire in this little controller into the car just so I can run a fan while I'm doing my initial setup. But eventually I'm going to wire this into my Mega Squirt using, a, uh, creating a new PWM output. Uh, you could also use an Arduino here for this single wire here. It'd be really easy to write up an Arduino program that would take a, like a GM coolant temperature sensor, convert that into a temperature and output a duty cycle and even display it. Uh, you can get creative there, but you can also use a, you, you can just use an Arduino Nano, put it in a little work box, put it in your glove box, and it'll be pretty reliable like that. Um, but anyway, so that's the Contour fan setup. If you have any questions, let me know. Thank you very much.